Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope you started your day is amazing and you know I'm not just saying that I really truly believe it. You know, I've got a little bit of a problem that I need your help with. I really do want your advice on this problem, but before we get started on that, let's uh, back up for a second and you guys know that my career uh, with reptiles really started BHB, right? All that you see around me. As a matter of fact, we have a couple really amazing baby snakes that are hatching out. Just little baby clovers. We don't have a whole lot left, guys, but look at these beautiful apricots. Cop Puebla milk snakes right there. Whoa! Oh my gosh, these guys are fired. Oh, and look at it, it's biting the heck out of me. What are you doing? What? Oh my gosh. Uh oh, uh oh, okay. All right, so these guys are a little crazy. I'm gonna set my camera down for one second. Oh my gosh, they're all over the place. Come on, come on, stay in there. Let go, let go. Oh, let go. All right, make sure there's no heads caught in there. All right, so regardless, uh, Puebla milk snakes can be great animals. Uh, they got a little bite force for a little tiny baby like that, but they're really, truly beautiful animals. And I always say they're a great starter milk snake. Even though they can be a little cantankerous when they're young, they calm down really well, and they do really good. And of course, then we had some little cow kings. And these are really an interesting clutch right here because we have lavender cow kings, and then we have normal coastal albino cow kings in the same clutch. And that's just kind of unusual. I normally don't see that, and I don't even know why the lavender lavenders that we bred were het for the other albino. These are non-compatible animals here. The lavender and the normal coastal albinos are not. So it's basically like a T positive and a T negative, but these must be het for one another. A little bit of a surprise, but the lavender cow kings are absolutely incredible. And uh, the normal albinos are too. This actually looks like a little snow cow, which is like the lavender snow cows we've been producing, those purple ones, but in the normal albino T negative sense. So that's pretty cool. And again, I think we literally have like maybe six more clutches of colubrids to hatch and then 2000 and it's 20 is done. Have about 20 more ball python clutches. So we have a little bit more there, but uh, what an amazing season. And you know, I love BHB and breeding reptiles. And I know I've said it a million times, but the truth is I couldn't imagine life without BHB and breeding snakes. I mean, it's afforded me so many amazing experiences, not to mention just working with incredible animals. This is that amazing banana Cine lori ball python we hatched out. And look at the kind of weird orange splotching that's coming through. I don't know where that color is, but it is incredible. I love the way the lori project is just kind of really influencing, in particular banana stuff, but also you know those super lori leopards have been just absolutely amazing. And there's been so many incredible animals that we produced this year. Certainly one of the coolest ball python production years we've ever had. Take a look at this one. This is actually a fire Cine cypress ball python. I mean, oh my gosh. And like I mentioned, we still have like 20, 25 clutches of snakes to hatch this year in ball python. So we have some bangers coming, a couple clown clutches that are gonna be absolutely ridiculous to kind of end the year. I think it's like the last couple clutches of the year. So it's gonna be really cool, but look at how amazing that animal is. And again, working with such amazing animals like Woma pythons here, you know, I've been working with these guys for the last 20 something years and they are so amazing. And so many of these animals at BHB have been, you know, just incredible. But you know, life is an evolution, right? And I'm always, evolving and in constant flux. You guys know over the last few years, the Reptarium has really been where a lot of my passion has been. Now don't get me wrong, I still love every animal here at BHB. I love breeding snakes, I love getting eggs, I love hatching snakes, I love all of that. And I'll never stop loving that. Don't think that I ever will, but I really do love the Reptarium, what that brings, the education, the entertainment, the interaction. Not to mention, you know, I normally don't get to have like really great relationships with the animals at BHB, because we have a lot of animals, we're breeding them. And, uh, but over at the Reptarium, we get to play with them. We get to know their personalities. And although I love this part of my life at BHB, the truth is the Reptarium is really what the future is for me as far as my passion and direction in life. That's not to mean that BHB won't always be a part of my life, but I do have a little bit of an issue I have to deal with here relatively soon. Before we get into anything else, I was just looking around and I saw, this is one of Lucy's baby. Of course, the Citron Tiger is absolutely gorgeous. Getting some size to her. I uh, gotta get her into soak because she has a little bit of stuck shed on her right now, but unbelievable, she looks beautiful. She definitely doesn't have the attitude of her mom. She is a sweetheart. And to say the Reptarium has been life-changing would be an understatement. It's been a massive transition from breeding snakes to now really running a private zoo and having such amazing experiences. Obviously, we did the 1.0, now we're on to 2.0, and this is where I need your help, so uh, buckle up. I, I really want you to think about what the next steps are. 
So initially, what I was thinking, obviously sitting here in the podcast room, is that we could move the colubrids from upstairs at BHB into the basement here. Of course, this is the podcast room. You guys know that. We've got the control room over here that's getting done. And then this will ultimately be a gecko room and the colubrid room over here. So originally I thought, okay, that takes the dilemma of actually what we're going to do with the colubrids and geckos from BHB if we're going to expand the reptarium into where BHB is now. Uh, so that part is gonna work out just fine. And then I really thought that we could move the dungeon into 2.0's basement right here because it's the same size. And I thought, okay, we can move all the animals here. But as you can see, our gift shop is taking up a lot of space here. And quite frankly, the gift shop does really well at the Reptarium. So there's no way Lori's gonna give up her space. So I would say at least 30 to 40% of this basement now needs to be taken up by overstock and stock for the gift shop, which brings me to my actual dilemma. And I truly I am interested to hear what you guys think about this because now obviously that I can't bring all of BHB's dungeon over to the new place, we have one of two things going on. What are you doing, Papa? What you got going on? You saying come up and saying hi to dad? Hi buddy. Hi, bud. <laughs> RJ is such a sweetheart. Oh, and by the way, with the expansion, which we really want to do, and that's what this whole video is about, is expanding the Reptarium into the dungeon and upstairs, it, RJ will definitely have a spot on display, so he's going to be hanging out. Right, RJ? Love you, buddy. So, the dilemma. I could do one of two things. I can either rent or buy another place for BHB, which I'm not a big fan of from the standpoint that that increases overhead and complexity in my life and you guys know I'm trying to simplify my life I know this sounds weird as I'm expanding and do all kinds of stuff but I really am trying to find like happiness in life and I don't know that the right answer is to add more space more building payments more stress and all that other stuff and then the other option is to downsize some of BHB now I love every single animal in this place so I have to choose what animals I would get rid of if I would get rid of some. Maybe downsize a little in ball pythons, a little here, a little there, and maybe the dungeon would have to be about 70% of the animals it is now, meaning 30% of the animals would have to be rehomed somewhere else. Let me know in the comments what you guys think I do. I, I, I'm in a huge dilemma here, guys, because my passion and my evolution is all about the reptarium and doing that in these swimming experiences and all the crazy stuff that we can bring to this area here. But at the same time, I love BHB. It's a tough thing, like what do I do? I wanna hear from you guys, what would you do if you were me? Would you downsize a little bit at BHB, focus on the Reptarium, or would you maybe try to look for another space with BHB and move the whole thing there? I I'm really in a quandary here, guys, and that's why I'm coming to you guys for your opinion. I remember one time watching Casey Neistat, a really good vlogger here on YouTube, and he said that in to move forward, sometimes you've gotta let go of one vine to grab the next vine, right? And that if you didn't let go of that vine, the next vine is too far out of reach. And it's not that I'm talking about letting go of BHB, but do I let go of some of it to try to reach for that next vine? Uh, I don't know. Maybe that's the right call. I really need to know what you guys think. Speaking of vines, I'm in uh, what we hope to be the new sloth room. Now, let me just kind of update you on where we're at right now. My guy Jay, not camera guy, young Jay, is actually heading down to go visit a sloth. Uh, I'm gonna put a picture right here of it. Name's Drogo, and if this sloth is what the people say it is, a three-year-old, super tame, super habituated, been doing exactly what we want to do, interactions, uh, we are going to get Drogo. But we also have to redo this room because you need permits. Now, turns out our permits could be back as early as four to six weeks from now. Then they have to actually come and inspect the room before you get your final permits and I can actually get Drogo, right? So what we have to do is start working on this quickly because we only have four to six weeks to get this room all together. And again, what the idea is is to remove all this stuff, rock out the rest of the walls here, have a tree right in the center of this room that goes up with a bunch of different branches because sloths need trees. Believe it or not, if they don't have a tree to climb on and actually hold, they won't use the bathroom, they get bound up and die. There's a whole bunch of other things I've been learning about sloth. We wanna make an amazing enclosure, and I think that this room can be absolutely incredible for an in complete enclosure. That way people can literally walk in here and interact with the sloth. It's gonna be amazing. So uh, again, you know, continuing on with following that passion and dream, right? So hopefully we may actually have a sloth, not in our possession, but as early as next week, and then in the next maybe six to eight weeks, it will be here uh, and by the way if we get it I think I'm gonna make a trip down personally and go meet 
Drogo before we do this because I, I just I'm so excited so anyways uh, again moving forward a lot here with the Reptarium expansion here before we even move on to 3.0 by the way um, yeah salt and peppers enclosure still leaking Why everybody thinks I'm a bitch. <laughs> Speaking of that, uh, <laughs> so I was just talking about the sloth in the sloth room and stuff like that. And I mean, you're coming around, right? To, to Drogo? I'm coming around where? Where am I Com going? You're coming around to Drogo or sloth being a part of the reptarium family. Uh, I told you, I'm keeping an open mind. You still haven't done all your homework yet. I've done so much homework, you don't even know. I've been doing homework right, on I this. I don't since, know, because yeah. I don't have it. So this is the thing, Lori wants me to like put it in writing, like so I'm reading and I'm learning, but she wants it in writing, like it's not good enough for me to have all the information in my head. Yes, you need that, to have it in writing. It's, it's just like a child, that's what proves to me that you did it, I have it, this is the proof of what we need to do. What so I'm just gonna print out a bunch of care sheets online, is that good enough? I mean, it's something. Yeah, so there Will you go. Will it be good enough? I don't know. You don't know? Well, Drogo's coming soon. <laughs> Uh, that is yet to be determined until you do your homework. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a good student. I'm doing my homework. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, so listen, I was out back just taking a little bit of a break and some family came up that are going to be coming to the Reptarium tonight at 7 o'clock. And uh, they said, hey, is there any way I can be in the vlog? So I figured, you know what, let's surprise them with salt and see what they have to say. Okay. So it's just like so this cool. and just like that. Oh, what do you think, bud? Cool. It's awesome. So my mom would just tell me with the, um, <laughs> like for tonight, Bella can be on my shoulder and like <laughs> <the> matchy matchy. <laughs> She's be mad. You guys want to hold? Yeah. It's awesome. Well, thank you guys for coming all this way. Oh, no problem. Mr. Mr. Bunny gave him a virtual video chat with you. Ah, nice, and nice. So ever since then, it's been all about the reptilian. All right. So we finally. <laughs> it feels so weird. <laughs> so well, I'm cool. so glad that you guys came and welcome. You know, and we'll have fun tonight, okay? I'm gonna put salty back, and I'll be out in a second. All right, I'll be right back. I'll be right back, guys. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> Ivy is back in shed as always and you know this is my dilemma guys and I really do want to have your advice because sometimes you have to make hard decisions to move forward in life and there is no doubt that I'm going to have some difficult decisions over the next little bit on what to do and so on like that so I need your help. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please comment down below if you did. Uh, hey check out this playlist right here where we were building out the Reptarium. Could you also do it if you know I've been working hard on that podcast room right up here. You can subscribe to that podcast channel called Checking In. On this side subscribe to this vlog channel. Please turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to somebody and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.